Little bit, little bit, you ain't talking big. Get out my way, little bit. Sweltering here in North Florida, but the good news, the radar is clear. Still, hydration will be key today at TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. This crowd excited to see their Jaguars as both teams emerge from their tunnels a moment ago. We are just about ready for football as the Jags get set to match up with the Detroit Lions. And he'll be dropped at the 21-yard line. So bringing it out of the end zone proves not a good decision. Loses him about four yards. stop him right at the line of scrimmage just no cutback lane to be found whatsoever second and ten no gain on the play brings up second and ten at the 21 yard line so after the run for no gain here's second and ten from the gun Minshew to throw and they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. Jaguars. How about a guy proving his worth in different ways? Had the big play in the run game to play before. This time, they go right back to him in the passing game, and he comes through with yet another big play. That's why you work out so hard in the offseason, so you can stay on the field and accumulate big plays. Not much there, only a yard. One thing we do know, he's going to get his catches, so as they move forward defensively, got to continue to focus on not giving up the big play when he does catch the ball in the secondary. Here's a throw to his running back. It's complete. Call it a gain of five. And that'll bring up a third down. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense brought pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back, and it can turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. And that will be incomplete. Brandon, we saw these defenders flying to the football in their win last week, and nothing has changed. They're still moving around quickly and forcing incompletions. He punted four times in the loss last week as he gets this one away here. And this is going to hit the goal line and continue on into the end zone for a touchback. 20-yard line. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. First carry for DeAndre Swift. And he stopped right at the 25 after a gain of five. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. 
but a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and you can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. And in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. He'll find Swift out of the backfield. And yeah, they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. They'll get a dozen there, and the Lions have a first down. Now a play fake here on first down. And he just gets rid of it, throws it away. A wise move there, looked like nobody open. Now second down. It's yeah, that one sailed on him. You've got to make sure you give your receiver a chance to come down inbounds because they are very gifted. They'll make the circus catches, but they make them out of bounds. That does you no good. On second down, Swift. And some room to work. And he gets us to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. 16 yards, a first down. Happy for the Detroit Lions to get DeAndre Swift in the second round. Felt bad for the young man because I thought he was the best running back in the draft. And he lasted until the second round. What's happened for him? Running backs, I hate to use the word devalue, but people aren't going to take them quite as high right now, and he's in that cycle. But I think the Lions have really benefited. This guy can cut first, run with power, and he can catch the ball out of the backfield. I really like him, and he was my number one running back. To the sideline, and it's caught, but boy, he's out of bounds. Well, they tried to get him into space coming out of the backfield, but it'll be third down. He was you could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. They'll try and run here with Swift. He's got a first down and much more inside the 20. And finally down at the nine-yard line. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. A stop there on third. They could have held him to three on this opening drive. Now they have to bow their necks on first and goal. And if I'm looking at this from the offense's point of view, that's a big-time pickup right there. And I'd go right at him with another momentum play. I'd go quickly and attack him because right now they probably have their heads down a little bit since they didn't stop him on third down. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Here's second and nine. They'll run for the first time with Johnson. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. Detroit. Carry on Johnson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Lions are going to take a first quarter lead. It's up, it's good, and the Lions lead 7-0. Makes the score Lions 7, Jaguars nothing. After the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Right after the touchdown to extend their lead, now maybe opening the door a little bit there by allowing starting field position at the 40. Minshew and the Jags now with a first and 10 at their own 42. He'll look to throw right away. Escaping the pressure right. And this one into the hands of D.J. Shark. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. 28 yards the gain there on the catch and run. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Here's Minshew. And that one complete to Wendell Smallwood. Give him seven on the play, and it'll make it a second down. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. He is taken down at the 21 after a short gain of two. And this is why aggressive defensive coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. Move. 
They'll try to throw for it with Minshew. Flush to his right. Detroit was up for the challenge through the air. They force a fourth down. Intended for number 34. Incomplete. Results in a fourth down. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. On fourth down, Minshew into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Christian Jones, the one who picked it. He's at the 40, the 20, 10, and he will score. Touchdown, Lions. Now, remember, this is the number one defense in the National Football League. There's a good example of why. Shows that they set an aggressive tone, not just stopping the run, not just getting after the quarterback, but the ball's in the air. They treat it like they're the receivers, and they went after that one and took it all the way. 14-0 to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. Prater to kick off. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kicks away. And this one will not be handled. It's into the end zone for a touchback. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And they're in a bind early here, down 14-0. Are you worried at this stage or still too early? You're worried. You're just trying not to transmit it to the rest of your team. You want to make sure that they stay positive. And got his man complete. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. Give them 32 on the play. Down at the 43-yard line. Shotgun hand off to Thompson. And he'll be brought down at about the 42. And Justin Coleman brings him down. Well, sometimes you just have to give credit to the defense. Great job there at the point of attack, holding up. They won their battles at the line of scrimmage, left him no space to try and run. Really nice job swarming to the ball carrier. Now a quick throw as that's complete on the hitch route. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. 11 yards there, first down. Well, these guys have definitely been outplayed in the first half. I like their countenance. I like the way that they haven't panicked out there, the way they're carrying themselves. They were starting to move the ball. And what you have to do, maintain your poise and start to put together some drives. And he's able to get it down to the 25-yard line. It's a gain of seven, and it'll be second down. Second and three at the 25-yard line. Out of the gun is Minshew. Forced out to, and he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Kareem Martin. Showing his strength and quickness there, a loss of four. Well, someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get up field and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. Got his man, it's Eifert. Yeah, this defense rallies, and they stop him short of the first down right near the 24. Just a five-yard pickup, and it leads to fourth down. The field goal unit's going to stay put on the sideline. They're going to go on fourth down here. Minshew sets to throw. And that is caught. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Tyler Eifert, his second touchdown on the season. And the Jaguars are back with it a score. And that was a beautiful ball right there as he waited for his tight end to come uncovered in the end zone to give him points for patience as well. Delivered it right where it needed to be for six points. So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. And a fair catch signaled for and taken successfully. The Lions take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And it's a unit last drive that did it all on the ground, Charles. 
and they controlled it from the interior, big on big, right? Offensive lineman versus defensive lineman. But you know, in order to keep the football moving downfield, other people have to get involved as well. Your wide receivers, your tight ends, lead runners, anything that you have possible to get in front and keep the ball moving. Well, now the defense may be looking out for a pass coming up. Open man is Galladay complete. And taking it across midfield and just shy of the 40. First down Detroit, 16 yards on the pickup. Back-to-back -back good plays have him on the move on first down. Stafford going to give it to Swift. They're able to push forward for about four down to the 37. And result of that one, a nice four-yard gain. So you can use that to set up your play-action game, or you can come right back and continue to run the football because as an offensive play caller, you're on schedule and feeling pretty good about your next couple of calls. We've hit the two-minute mark in the second quarter, 14-7. And we'll remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll join Jonathan Coachman and the gang in Orlando. Coach will have stats and scores from the early games going on here around the NFL. To throw on second and six, Stafford. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 17-yard line. That one, a gain of 20 and a first down. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Brandon, all things considered, they have to feel pretty good about getting that type of a gain considering the blitz that they just had against them. Second down, Swift. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. The Jaguars are going to go ahead and use their first timeout as they'll stop it with a tick under a minute to go before half. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. This is Swift. And that'll hurt the average a bit as this time they're able to get him behind the line. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. And here now is the Jaguars' all-time leading scorer in another uniform. He had over 1,000 points with the Jags, Josh Scobie. And the 13-year man puts it through. And they will move up by 10 now, 17-7. to seven. They put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all, to me, that's a good drive. The Jaguars take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. Well, look at the clock here. You're inside of a minute. The first half hasn't gone that well for you. How are you going to play this drive? Well, I've been told by my coaches previous. He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Jaguars. DJ Chark, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Jaguars are able to strike quickly for six. And we didn't even get a chance to settle in for that drive. A quick strike of 75 yards, and they find the end zone. Don't you get the sense that film study was behind this one, that they saw something that they thought they could take advantage of? The key is calling it in the right situation. Knowing when it exists to go to it, they did exactly that. They've got to feel really good about what they did in advance of this game. Just looking down at the sideline now, their defense is like, man, can you have strung that out just a few <laughs> plays? Give us a break. Back out there. Hey, man, get that water break and get on out there and play. 
Fair catch made at the 25-yard line. The Lions take over first and 10. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And you're under a minute to go here in the half. Field position not really in your favor, but still time to try and move the ball and get in field goal range. Yeah, you got the lead. It's a, definitely a thought. Let's go ahead and try and increase it. But at the same time, I don't like the odds. I don't like where they are on the field. Got the lead. They've done well in the first half. Don't mess it up and go into halftime looking at each other wondering what if. Now a first down throw, Stafford. He'll get this one to Galladay. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. The Lions now going to use the second of their timeouts as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds to go in the first half. Working with a second and three. From the gun, here's Stafford. This complete to Jones. He's going to go out of bounds, but he takes this one down just shy of the 20. That good for 21 yards on the catch and run. A gain of 21 yards. In addition to his really good hands, Marvin Jones makes big plays downfield. Ended up missing the last month of the 2019 season. Still had 62 catches for nearly 800 yards. And even more importantly, nine touchdown catches included in that number. When Marvin Jones goes downfield for a pass, Oftentimes, he finds his way into the end zone. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Stafford looks to throw again. Oh, hit as he throws there, incomplete. Intended for Marvin Jones. Incomplete. So on second down, the field goal unit is on here as they try to get three before half. But the right hash here should be an easy one. Prater's kick is good. And that'll make this a seven-point game. So a capper there to a pretty good first half. And I love the way that they put a chokehold on the clock and pretty much drained everything before they put the field goal on the board as they headed into the half. And they'll watch this one fall in the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. 25-yard line. come to the line to start their next drive. Likely time for just one final play, and then it'll be off to the locker room to talk about how they can erase this deficit. Yeah, and I think a lot of people look at it and go, well, maybe you take a shot here. Maybe you get some momentum going into the half. What's the flip side of that? You do something crazy, quarterback gets hit, ball comes free, and now you're down an even bigger margin. Go ahead and take this one, go to the locker room, start over. Okay, coach, appreciate it. A one-touchdown game here as we get set to resume play in the second half. The Lions in the lead, and they're going to get the football first as well as the second half is underway. And that's going to hit in the end zone as we restart things here in the second half with a touchback. Stafford and the Lions now have it first and 10 at their 25-yard line. He fakes the give here and looks to throw. Jaguar pressure and a Jaguar sack. Miles Jack. It'll go as a loss of about eight as he gets in there to drop it. Well, oh, partner, we know they came out of the locker room down on the scoreboard, but I will guarantee you the defensive side of the ball gets super emotional. They can come out and play with aggressiveness, with fury, because they don't have to be quite as precise, and it paid off for them on that play, didn't it? Sure did. Excellent play, really setting the tone for this third quarter. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A gain there of 30 big ones. First down. Did it doesn't look like this defense found the magic elixir at halftime. This offense was rolling in the first half, and that's continued here in the third quarter. Another big play right there. 
Here's a quick hitch round and the throw complete. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Ten more for him on that one. He's been a busy man. It's a first down. So in Jacksonville territory now. Here's a first and ten at the 42-yard line. Throwing deep for Galladay. That's going to be caught. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. Galladay. Touchdown. Kenny Galladay, his second touchdown on the season. And the Lions add on to their lead. And the lead is up to 14. Makes the score Lions 27, Jaguars 13. And after the touchdown, out is Prater to kick. Now this will make it into the end zone. And they'll get him down right at the 25-yard line, so the same result that he opted for the touchback. At their own 25-yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And their halftime hole now even deeper, and they need a big drive here just to answer the first touchdown of the second half scored against them. They were down at the half. Now, as you mentioned, they're down a little bit bigger, but no time for discouragement. Just got to get back to it, right? Put your shoulder against the boulder and start pushing and try and get back to where you were to start the half. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. Looking to throw it, Minshew. That is incomplete. They don't get the hook up there, but you really have to marvel at how precise he's been throwing the football these last couple weeks. Oh, that's a perfect word for it, precise, because if you're at 70% or better two weeks in a row, you have a job as long as you want one in this league, won't you? I mean, let's face it's not just West Coast offense either. He's putting the ball downfield as well. And he'll let this one go deep for Chark. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. This is taken around the 12. Call that one an even 60 yards. 6-0. And the Lions will take over. The Lions offense ready to kick off their next drive. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. But you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. A good pick up there, 26 yards. And the Lions... First down. Here's a hand off to Swift. And he's going to take this across midfield into Jacksonville territory. The tackle made by the linebacker, Joe Schobert. Well, the end of all that hitting and hollering, it was a four-yard run, so the offense is going to go back to huddle and feel pretty good about themselves. Defensively, you have to feel okay because you didn't let it turn into a bigger run. But the goal, shut it down for two yards or less. That's when you start to feel good about yourselves. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. 15 yards on the play, first down. First down, Detroit. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Stafford now to throw. Throw left side, taken in by Galladay. And they'll have it in the red zone before he crosses over out of bounds. 15 yards last play and 15 yards here this go around. So here's a first and 10 now down inside the 20. Stafford delivers this to Hawkinson. And he takes this one in for a Lions touchdown. T.J. Hawkinson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Lions are able to extend their lead. For a big tight end, he can sure move like a slot receiver when he gets ahead of steam going. And as a defensive back, you've got a big decision to make when he's moving like that. Matt Prater to kick off for Detroit. 
Now he's back out there to boom this one away, maybe with some frustration after the PAT miss. Now this will make it into the end zone. And he'll get it up past the 20 to about the 22. First and 10 at their own 22-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. And on the last go around, they really couldn't get anything going. They had to punt from deep inside their own territory, which means you're going to lose the field position battle as a general rule. What they're looking for now is a little more consistency. Move the ball at least a few times on offense, get a couple of first downs, and hopefully flip the field. Yeah, just something to build off of. That's what they're looking for here. Second and five now. Minshew. And the catch good. It's Eifert. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. That one, a first down pickup of eight. When an offense reads blitz, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. A pass there, complete to Westbrook. They get six. That'll leave them with third and four. Westbrook. But it appears that they read man defense and went to the out route. And what you have to do on that one is the receiver's got to make sure he works a defender towards the middle of the field to give himself space to cut to the outside and have that ball delivered with good timing. And they got it done. It'll be Minshew again. He's got Thompson here, complete. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 41-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 41. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Kareem Martin picks up his second sack of the afternoon. Loss on the play. Brings up second down. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. After the sack, oh, they're staring at a challenge basically from the other side of town. It's second at a country mile. Eluding the pressure right. And he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. LaVisca Chenault, the intended target, and it'll bring up third down. They certainly did a nice job improvising there, extending the play, hoping someone would come open downfield, but they never did. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. From the gun, Minshew to throw. Connection made with Chenault. And he's going to be out of bounds, but not before he takes it inside the 40. A big pickup, 18 yards, but they still stop him well short of the marker. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter, let's see how this plays out. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. Open man is Westbrook complete. And they'll get this one to about the 20-yard line. But no reason not to try it there, and they do indeed convert on fourth. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. In a double coverage, and it's intercepted off at the 14 and he's going to return it to the 21 yard line they'll take over well this defensive pressure has been constant all game long the pass rush the coverage they've all been excellent and now they'll tack on an interception here as this one continues to slip just further and further out of hand give him a couple on the carry there second and eight two yard line 
Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. And it's third down. The Lions on third down. They've been okay two for three thus far. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, Stafford. And the Jags get to him as down he goes. Timmy Jernigan with a big-time sack on third down. It's a loss of seven. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. And he can't field it cleanly. It's loose. And this is scooped up by the Lions. And maybe getting a little too cute there on the punt return. Sometimes they forget Paramount holding on to that football. I really do believe most of the return guys think to themselves, when I hit the ball, I'm going to make the play that's going to change the game. Break it. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Detroit. DeAndre Swift with touchdown number eight on the year. And the Lions are able to grow their lead. Could not block that one any better. Everyone was accounted for, and a great surge by the offensive line. Prater for the extra point, and that stretches the lead all the way up to 27. The Jaguars take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And just looking ahead, it would appear that that bye week is coming at the right time. They'll have two weeks to chew on this one, though probably not one that they want to chew on. A poor performance from start to finish. Solid way to start the drive. 13 yards, picking up the first. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Now Minshew. And he completes it to Westbrook. And this will be good for a pickup of nine to the 46. A gain of nine. Brings They'll come up now on second and a yard. The 46-yard line. They give it here to Thompson. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Friend, I think you and I were both raised the same way in the game of football. You run to set up the pass, but I think we've discovered in this NFL, a lot of teams pass to set up the run. And that's what they've done throughout this game. They've aired it out, thrown it around the yard. Now they've come back to the running game, and they find a way to be successful with it. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. First and 10. A big one there for the Jags. 18 yards, first down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Jaguar football here as we welcome you back. They've got a first and 10 as they search for a late score. And the throw left sideline here is caught, but they'll rule it incomplete. Couldn't keep his feet in. Second down. That incompletion is not a surprise with the way that this one has gone, and the frustration of body language is evident everywhere. This team, they've really been put through the ringer in this one. Second and ten. Here's Minshew. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And that going to be incomplete. Good effort there, trying to take a shot, but it's third down. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. Again, Minshew looking to throw. Able to complete this to Chanel. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions 14. 16 yards that time on the pickup for the Jags and a first down. There's a first and 10 at the 14-yard line. This is caught, and he can't quite get there. Tackled down at the 1. Back-to-back -back nice plays, 12 yards that time and a first down. Well, this game was decided a while ago, and that completion there, it's going to artificially inflate his passing numbers. So right now, the only one really applauding. And he takes it in. Touchdown, Jacksonville. Chris Thompson, his second touchdown on the season. And the Jaguars make some inroads here on that deficit. 
And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team, but I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film, but this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one. Fielded a couple yards into the end zone. And they're going to start in a hole as he's brought down at the 11. Well, conventional football, football 101, tells us if you don't get it back to the 20-yard line on a kickoff return, that's a disappointment. But some of these team special teams coaches, with approval by the head coach, they give them full authority to go ahead and bring it out and try to be aggressive. Almost what we call the green light, red light theory. Green light means go, red light means stop. Looks like he had green on that play. Didn't get to the sticks, but that's an ideal carry there on first down, isn't it? I mean, now you're second and one. Although, you know, in the NFL, even if he picked up the first down, I don't think it's a big difference because the clock doesn't stop. Yeah, not like college. Right. If it's college football, you want to make second and one is probably better than picking up the first down because in college football, the clock stops with every first down and actually aids the defense in that situation. Two yards, good enough for a first. Ryan. They stay on the ground on first with Johnson. And he got blown up on that play. Back at the 20. Two yards, the loss, second and 12. It's a loss of two. Brings up second but Charles, it's one thing to win. It's another thing to win and put up the amount of points that they did. Boy, were they clicking on offense. They can't help but feel great about themselves, can they? I mean, what a game to put up that number of points, continually feel like they're moving the ball and things are working and clicking. They think that they can bottle this and carry it with them. And as an offensive coordinator, you just don't think you can do anything wrong. Whatever you call, run, pass, it's all going to work. That's called being in the zone. So for Detroit, they improved to 5-0 now on the young season. And they'll get another road test next week as they head to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. Meanwhile, for Jacksonville, the loss here will move them back to 500 at 3-3. Three and, three. and now they'll head to the bye week as they'll be back in action in week 8. So for our entire crew, alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. Thanks for watching, everybody. We'll see you next time.